All right, what's up guys? So today we're gonna to be reacting to a video called Zero to a Million Dollar Business in One Month. So, Abraham, before we start, we've reacted to Bia Heza before. He's actually been off YouTube for a while now. I just came back and this is his first comeback video. Um, have you ever had a business that's gone from zero to a million in a month? A million gross or a million net? I think it's gross, gross. A million gross? Yeah. That's still pretty impressive in a month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In yeah. a month, that's, that's still a lot. Um, I don't know if I've had from zero to a million. Probably not. Yeah, I mean that's 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 crazy. I'm I'm yeah. curious to see like what he did and how he actually breaks that down to see what it actually what it actually ends up equating to. So yeah, you can sure. start whenever you want. So you said he's been off of YouTube for a while. Yeah. So he made a video, and I, it's actually I'd want to look more into it. But he basically said like he was getting burnt out. Like he felt like it was like the rabbit race of YouTube where he was on like a hamster wheel that was never ending, and he was like, I just gotta take a break. And he made like a separate channel where he was doing like, I think non-business related content, like more about his daily life. Uh -huh. um, but I don't, I, I'd assume it didn't do too well because he's, he jumped right back on this. Wow. So, okay, yeah. cool. A million dollars a year is $83,000 a month, $19,000 a week, and $2,700 per day. And over the course of these next few weeks, I wanna take a business from zero to that sweet number of 2,700 per day in a single month. I've been going ham with e-com lately. I'm neither kosher nor halal when it comes to e-commerce right now. I'm currently in the process of building out a network of direct to consumer brands that I could eventually sell as a portfolio or just continue running as a money printer. To me and with my experience, it's more feasible to get 10 stores doing five to 10 million a year than getting one store to that magical 100 million number. And I think it's a more diversified place. So in this video, maybe months. even video, so you obviously own a ton of businesses in like different industries. Yeah. How true do you think that statement is? Like, is it easier to have a whole bunch of businesses that are doing a couple million dollars a year as opposed to like one that's doing like a home run of like a few hundred, a hundred million or more? Yeah, I, I would say it really depends on the person. Um, some people can't focus on a whole lot of businesses. So like having that one and they could just focus on and taking it to the next level um, is easier. But for a lot of people, like it's very hard to get one business to like just a crazy number, but to get like a, a whole bunch of businesses to, you know, a percentage of the way there, you know, in theory could be easier if you have the right team. Mm. Well, one thing, you don't have to put this on camera, but one thing, I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to fuck the beginning of the video up, but it says zero, oh, zero to a million dollar business in a month. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's easy. I thought it was zero to a million dollars in a, a month. month. Oh, 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 oh! Like he was making a million dollars. Yeah, in one, in month. one month. That's what no, I thought. Oh, no, zero no. to a, to like a million dollar business. Yeah, that's that I've done plenty of times. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so when he first asked zero, I was like, "Fuck a million in a one month." <laughs> yeah, now it's not that as impressive anymore. <laughs> series <laughs> no i'm not gonna promise another video series i'll actually probably just do everything within this video but it's gonna be me tracking a behind the scenes look of how i actually start one of these e-commerce brands for my real business outside of youtube gentlemen so check it out for me step one has always been to find a product but nowadays i'm not necessarily looking for a winning product as much as i'm looking to enter a niche so what's cool is like what he's doing this is this is sort of what i did in my teens and twenties to some degree to make a ton of money. Like I went on to, you know, found different products and I basically bought and sold them. I did a lot of stuff, e-commerce, a lot of it in the beginning was eBay and then, you know, websites and, you know, eventually stuff like Amazon. But um, this, this is what anyone really could do when they're young. People ask, oh, what can you do, what can you do? You gotta find some good products and, and just resell it. Um, there's a lot of people that do that now. I mean, I did it back you know, 25 years ago, and there's probably way more products, and it's probably way easier to do it now because there's so many more platforms. Yeah. So, um, yeah, what, he, what he's doing is really cool. I mean, bring it back. I, I think what also it shows is like everyone, especially I feel like now, dro drop shipping was such a huge like internet viral sort of thing because everybody felt like, yeah. oh, I can do this with very little money up front. Mm -hmm. I think this goes to show that like, even if something's oversaturated, if you do stuff and you're really creative and outside the box and like are persistent on it, like you could still do really well in these type of things. Oh, for sure. So for sure. We, we know a bunch of people that do well in this right now and sell an assortment of products in that niche. By doing that, I can constantly cycle and test new products, accumulate repeat customers, do some absolutely nasty email marketing upon product launches. But my big tip, if you're just starting out, 
beauty niche. That's the space I built my first few successful stores in. And it's just kind of the easiest to crack since all of the products you'll be selling are in a way problem solving. Once you have some products, you wanna build up a website that's gonna absolutely riz and hypnotize, seduce your customer <laughs> into purchasing. Just find the biggest brands in your niche and replicate what they're doing. Pay someone to create a store with similar design features or just do- See, so what he said was, you know, he likes doing the uh, female product industry. Um, and that's a great industry, but that's what he's good at. That's what he's done. That's what he's comfortable with. So he should keep doing that because that's what he's comfortable with. If somebody asks, you know, him, what business should I get into? He's going to tell people that because that's what he knows. That's what he's good at. But is that necessarily the right business to get into for everybody? Not really. I mean, for, you know, for the right people, it's the right business. For other people, that might not be the right business. So I, I know like, you know, laundry mats and car washes and, and, you know, vending machines, you know, blew up and went crazy over the last, you know, year or so on YouTube. And people were like, oh, this is the best business, this, that, that. People always ask me, is that the best business to get into? I mean, it's not really the best business to make a lot of money long term, but it's, it's a business that you can get into, you know, relatively low money, especially if you're doing creative finance. And, you know, cash flow, you know, 100000 plus, you know, every single um, year on without doing too much, you know, of manual labor. So, um, but is that the best business? No, the people that made the most money in the world didn't ever have car washes, didn't ever have laundry mats, didn't ever have any machines, you know? That's like a side hustle, it's, it's a cool little gig, but to get to like a big scale, that, that's not the, necessarily the right thing. So again, there's not really a right or wrong thing to, to get into. It's whatever, you know, you, uh, you're good at, whatever you know about, and or it could be anything. The best people in every single industry do really well yourself not difficult using Shopify. From here, you're gonna need advertisements, also known as the creative. And the current meta for that is UGC ads, videos that look like they were filmed by regular people on their iPhones, kind of like a review. The most common strategy is to scrape videos you find online, mash them together, and then again, once the sales start rolling in, you can start buying UGC. Creators on Fiverr are usually fairly inexpensive, but they're very hit or miss. You can also find people on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Once you have three to five ad creatives, we can begin the testing and start paying TikTok to show these ads. It took about a week, but everything I just talked about, I've already had done, and we're now on this step ready to launch. I feel like I've made enough videos talking about the previous steps, and I have my full course detailing how to do all of that. So I wanna focus on what we're gonna do now that we're launching. I just set up the ads, so once they get approved, we can start running in opt- Fundamentally, we have brick and mortars, right? Where yeah. we've like gone through the due diligence process, mm -hmm. the research, etc. He's literally done every single step we've done, except he's just doing on an e-commerce platform. Right. And it's crazy how many parallels there are on almost everything that we do. It's like literally the exact same process. Yeah. You figure out a concept, you figure out the ways you accomplish that concept, you build out some sort of store, whether it's a physical brick and mortar or an online base. Yep. You figure out how to make customers spend more money, like he just figured out his marketing strategy for UC UCG ads. It's, identical. It's, identical. it's literally the exact process. And so I, I mean, that's really cool because that means once you have these fundamental things and skills, you can kind of apply it to a whole bunch of different things. Yeah, that's what, I, that's what I've been saying. You know, once you understand business, you know, like it doesn't matter what niche or what industry you're in or if you're online, offline, you know, brick and mortar or whatever, it just doesn't matter because you understand business, you know, like all these businesses I've bought over the last 10 years, particularly, I knew nothing about any of those industries and, uh, but I knew business and I was able to implement business and they, and they all worked, you know? Yeah. So yeah, exactly. Optimizing our store, which I feel like there's not as much content made about. Budget approved. Luckily, it didn't take long for our ads to get approved. And about an hour after they were, Absolutely insane. Dopamine hit. Andrew Huberman is pissed right now. But I'm gonna pretty much leave this alone for the next few days and check in after. That ended up being the only sale for day one. Day two crossed three figures. Day three, things began looking better. Day four was eh, but day five. We're sitting at $400 worth of sales on the day and it's only five o'clock, which I mean, not bad, right? Except it's not that simple. In reality, we're kind of in a bad place with the store right now. I'm looking at the last few days here. We've done a few hundred per day, but I think we lost money on each day. Today's looking a little better. Maybe we'll break even. But this exact point is we're like 99% of people trying this would give up and say e So he's saying that, you know, he's been losing money potentially the last four to five days. So we gotta understand why is he losing money because of the advertising? Because I'm I'm sure he's making like really good profit margins. I mean, actually the beauty industry, the stuff he's selling has the highest margins of, of a lot of different things you can sell. So mm. it's up there. So I know he's making like really good margins. He's spending a lot of money on advertising. Yeah, yeah, so that's what it seems like. We'll see, we'll see how much he's spending, but 
without advertising, you're not going to get any sales. So yeah. at some point, it just clicks. Let's... Which I've heard from dropshipping in general, the marketing is usually where you spend yeah. a majority of the money. Yeah, it has to be the marketing. I mean, we just did a video uh, the other week on selling water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, for like astronomical price. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it was all marketing. That's all it was. Yeah, literally. It's just freaking water. Is saturated. I tried it. It's not profitable. I can walk away with this without my conscience bugging me for not trying. This is a huge drop off point. It's an incredibly common issue. And whether we choose to persevere or just give up right now is what separates the people who actually make money with e commerce and the ones that don't. If on your initial test you can get a store to break even, it's pretty likely you can get it to crack a profit. I have four things we can try and transform here. One, obvious, improve the product page so that more people who visit actually purchase. Two, play around with the pricing of the product, maybe do a bundle discount. Three, this one isn't gonna be huge just yet, but maybe we can negotiate with the supplier to get our product costs down. Four, and this is the big one, I'm gonna have a couple more products added into the store, have those product pages fully built out, and then start upselling people to purchase those products on the cart page. If done right, this can explode your average order value, subsequently increasing bus? your profit mark. So that's so crazy because I've heard so many people, including you touched mm -hmm. on it. There's only so many ways to make more money in a business. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he literally just went through, yeah. no matter what business you have, those four things apply. Yeah. You either get your cost down, you yeah. get more customers, your conversion rate has to be higher, you get more customers, or you have each customer spend more money, or you have the customers return more frequently. Yeah. That's the only way you can make more money in any business. And he yeah. literally just covered all four. Yeah. How old is he? He's, uh, I th he's younger than me. I think he's like 20, 20, 20. 21. Yeah. So do we know how he learned all this stuff or uh, he's self-taught like he's been self doing this since he was like 14 wow. he's been doing youtube for a long long time and yeah he's pretty he's pretty he's pretty sharp Margins. Although the sales were a little spotty next couple of days, the upsells were working to the point where I actually started running ads directly to the products we added in just to be upsells. Thanks to this, 10 days in, we hit our first $1,000 day, which from there, I continued increasing the budget of our ads while also implementing new ad creatives to scale horizontally. We're not quite there, but really getting close to our goal here. But even this progress, honestly, just kind of blows my mind every time. Because if you think about it, th we started this from scratch. This business didn't exist three weeks ago. And now it's at a point where even if we don't scale, if we just maintain it and keep it the way it is. Was this a business that he bought off somewhere? Or is this a business that he started, he started from, from scratch? This is when he started from scratch. Yeah. Oh, because he went from zero to... He, yeah, he went from literal zero. Because uh, we watched one of his and... other videos and he bought someone's business. Yeah. Yeah. So I wonder why he decided this time to start start it from the beginning as opposed to buying somebody. That, yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe he'll touch on that. Yeah. It's 2400 in revenue on the day. We've spent 1000 on ads. Let's say six to $800 in product costs. We're profiting about $600 today alone off this store. Extrapolated annually, that's a solid six-figure income that we've just created in like three weeks. Sure, we can't just kick back and do nothing. We'd still have to refresh the ad creators to keep the gravy train going, but you could probably maintain this with like six, seven hours a week, which if anything, is he like having to all drop shipped or does he have someone that's actually shipping it? I think he does only drop shipping. Like this, this entire thing is drop shipping. It's all drop shipping. Yeah. So he has it all, all this product at a, at a warehouse. Yeah. Like a, okay. Mm -hmm. I hope changes the way people watching this video view entrepreneurship and money. It's not an unattainable dream, right? There's a lot of money out there and with a little bit of out of the box thinking and some persevering where others wouldn't, you can definitely siphon some of it. Anyways, now that we've done a little bit of testing and can see that this has some potential, I'm gonna start paying UGC creators to create original ads, which those ads will likely perform better and further grow our margins. And the very next day, we completely blew past our original goal of 2,700 in a day, but I continued scaling the ads further, eventually peaking at just under five grand in a single day with a 35% profit margin. Meaning we were halfway to having a store that would profit a million dollars in a year, not just hit that in revenue. However, this is also the point where I had to stop the store entirely. I just had to turn off all of the ads. That wall looks familiar. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this one right here, just put this way. <laughs> That's okay. I just don't want to keep drop shipping on a store I plan on actually white labeling. This is enough testing and enough of a proof of concept for me to where I can take it seriously, actually order some product samples from China, get some custom packaging going, and turn this into a more legit brand. I use Alibaba to find suppliers. They do offer some protection as a platform, which is nice, but always keep your head on a swivel. Don't trust everything you're told by your suppliers. Try and find some that have a track record of delivering quality products on time. But after getting called dear friend about a hundred times, I did place some orders and two and a half weeks later, I was overjoyed to see some sussy looking packages at my doorstep. You're just gonna record or you're gonna I'm just a baby. I'm saying we <laughs> increase the wage again. I'm recording. Great. I'm recording. I see that. I'll touch that. Uh oh. Yeah. So he said he had to like stop all that and do something a little while ago. Is that because he ran out of product? What was... I, I don't think he had to. I think he wanted to to make it white labeled. I think he wanted to like develop a brand further as opposed to just like selling somebody else. Yeah, around. exactly. Okay. Your hands don't look like this while you're eating your lunch. You must be a liberal sissy. You must be a sissy boy. Super happy with the samples. They came in on time. Good quality exactly what I ordered, good customization. So we're solid on that front. And so at this point, you could either start fulfilling orders in house or send a bulk shipment to a third party fulfillment center. And you now have a white label, legitimate, profitable brand that has customized packaging, quick shipping, happy customers. Now, personally to scale from here, the blueprint is to order a ton of UGC content. That way we can start scaling horizontally, not just vertically. Definitely gonna keep the TikTok ads rolling, but also shift focus to doing a lot of Facebook and Google ads a little bit of Pinterest, maybe even some Snapchat for this one. Once that's running up and stable, you find a team or somebody you trust who you can look over all of this, test new products, and just kind of keep an eye on things. And then for me personally, the goal is to allocate no more than like, five, six hours a week to it, but mainly shift my focus to now starting in the next niche and then just repeating that cycle. If you are interested in starting something like this, I do have my full dropshipping course linked in the description, but if you have already started something like this and you have an e-commerce brand, whether it be dropshipping, if you have inventory, whatever it is, if you're doing anywhere from 30,000 up to around a million dollars a month and you're looking to exit, you no longer want these headaches, you don't want the e-com anxiety, reach out to me. I am in the market and currently acquiring e-commerce brands. Let's get rid of all of the- So this is gonna be his new thing. He's going to start just doing e-commerce. Well, I guess so buying all kinds of other products, all kinds of businesses and, and scaling it. Yeah, that's what it seems like. And I don't know if you caught it, but in the beginning of the video, he was like, uh, basically either rolling up all these companies if they're all in the same niche uh -huh. or just letting the operators cash cloud. So like he might be looking at an exit. I don't know if he's targeting yeah. a certain niche within the e-commerce space, but yeah, he do he's definitely aware of it. Yeah, if he does a big roll up on it, you know, the multiple you know, yeah. get, goes exponentially. For sure. Huh. But even if he didn't, like just, half a million from this company, a few hundred thousand from that company, a million from that, you know, every year, yeah. that, that could add up. Yeah, I wonder I wonder how, uh, I wonder if there's like reviews on his course, I'm curious. Yeah, I mean, you know, based on watching, you know, I never heard of him until we watched his last video, and this is of course the second video, I mean, obviously he's a really sharp kid. Um, he seems like he knows what he's doing, the advertising is the most important. Yeah. Um, I mean, I would buy his course if I wanted to learn this, I mean, there, there, there's no, uh, there's nothing that shows me that it wouldn't be good. Even even if it's not the best course, which um, who knows what the best course is, I guarantee you there's stuff in here you're gonna learn. Yeah. Um, you know, that you'll be able to use. Actually, uh, after this video, I wanna I wanna read the description of the course to see if he goes over his advertising strategy. Cause I've actually, I'm not that familiar with the UCG like advertisements that he was talking about. Mm -hmm. And it seems like that could be actually super yeah. effective. So curious. Yeah the anxiety around Facebook ad accounts and put you in a Lambo, let's slap a Pepsi on your wrist, hand over the Shopify password, hand it over. No, but seriously, feel free to reach out. We'd love to take a look and potentially give you an offer. That's gonna be it for this one. Assalamu alaikum and shalom, my brothers in Christ. So yeah, I mean, I, I think it's such a cool video. I, I love how he's from start to finish. He, he, you show his progress. He shows you like the hardships and stagnance of the business, mm -hmm. how he broke through them. The, the, the type of uh, strategies that he's using and the way he's analytically thinking of how he can like improve the store. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot to learn from it, even if you're not in the e-commerce space. I think like- Forming a legal really entity has, around your- I, I think he really has um, business in general down pat. I think he could do a lot more things than just e-commerce. Yeah, I, I'm sure if he's that young, not even 20 or something uh, or close. Yeah, I mean, I can't imagine the next five, 10 years, like, you know, where, where he'll be, how much, you know, he'll make and what big, bigger things he'll be into. Yeah, for sure. 
All right, guys, if you guys like this video and want to see more like it, comment down below, like, subscribe, make sure you hit that post notification bell, and uh, we'll see you on the next video.